amount of time he had, if he thought maybe he was going to draw a foul, but 59-56, Michigan State gets the win against Ohio State. All right, we have five games matching ranked opponents today. What's, what's the takeaway? What's the biggest thing you saw today that leaves a lasting impression? I think that the impression I've had, I think, is the same, that we've got some really good teams out there, some outstanding basketball teams. I'm not sure that anybody's separated. You know, last year I felt at this time that Kentucky was on its way to separating past everybody. There were other really good teams. I thought North Carolina was one of them last year, that those two teams were the best teams. I think Louisville's the best team. They certainly didn't finish the game today. They should have. Louisville should have won that game today. They, they You give all credit to Syracuse for winning, but if you're sitting in Rick Pitino's chair, you got to be saying, you know what, we gave that away. We had the lead at the end, had the ball. We should have won. I think all the teams today that played, Florida, they just got it going, both ends of the floor. You end up getting 21 turnovers for 34 points against Missouri. I don't care. Now that Kenny Boynton's finding his reign to balance with Murphy and what goes on with Young, this Florida team, of all the games today and all the teams today, Florida right now is probably playing the best basketball in the country. How about props for the mid-major? We're at a game right now where it's a number eight ranked team and a number 13 ranked team. There was a top 16 playing against the number one team in the country, but we're here here at the cathedral of basketball in, in these Indiana teams right tonight, now. okay? Look at the road record of Gonzaga. They own the Big 12. What, 4-0? And we can't talk enough about Alex Barlow's shot against Indiana when they were number one. But when you look at how they played in Maui when you were there against Marquette in North Carolina, these two teams don't need to prove to anybody. They play without fair, and they don't care what it is. They're going to get It's going to be a classic. They didn't take you to uh, Maui also? What's yeah. going on, Digger? They didn't, why they take Jay? They didn't take us to Maui? <laughs> Maui's, Maui's doing we, a, we haven't uh, earned it. Maui's doing a public beautification. <laughs> 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 they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't need that. They don't need that. Man. It's tough to make this building more attractive or this game. These two powerhouse programs, Gonzaga off to its best start in school history. Butler has played in two of the last three national championship games, and Oscar Robertson once set a playing in Hinkle Fieldhouse, named for the legendary Tony Hinkle, Hall of Famer, who coached all three sports baseball basketball and football here at Butler that coming and playing a game in this building on this floor was like going to heaven we're hoping that the game joins that ethereal realm tonight even though Butler is going to be without its leading scorer Rodney Clark you see the Bulldogs coming onto the floor they try to find a way to pick up some of the slack on offense and take care of a very good Gonzaga team on offense one of only eight teams in the country that average 80 points or more. So, Gonzaga's probably more talented. The deeper, they're healthier. Who wins the game tonight? You guys are going to get me in trouble with this pick. As much as I want to go with the Butler Bulldogs, since I've practiced on this floor, I've lived in Indiana almost six years, I have to go with the Zags because Butler's playing without their best player. The last time I coached on this floor in 85, we lost. I'm going with Butler <laughs> because they've got a way to win games they shouldn't win, and they're going to win it tonight because I just feel the motion's there. That, that's where I am. Gonzaga's better. My head says go with Gonzaga, but I, I feel in Butler. I'm taking Butler. And Gonzaga had a little bit of a rough trip in, sort of a delayed turning around from Thursday night. See if they had their legs coming from the West Coast. The one thing that Butler won't have is the sharpshooter Rodney Clark in that great range. How will Butler be able to compensate without the transfer from Arkansas? Just about set for the game from legendary Hinkle Fieldhouse on the campus of Butler. Let's get it. I'm told I occupy a special place in the center of the Hoosier State and in the hearts of basketball fans. I don't just hold events, I store memories, keep them locked inside these walls and fresh in people's minds. I've been home to the Bulldogs as they've scratched and clawed their way into the national limelight. And over the years, so many moments, so many sounds, so much excitement, so much love. I'm proud to be a National Historic Landmark, to have played an important part in the growth of the game and in the lives of so many great players, coaches, and fans. And I'm not done yet. Historic Hinkle Fieldhouse, one of the most hallowed college basketball arenas in the nation is our host tonight for a battle of the Bulldogs 
National Powers Gonzaga and Butler are set to go. Welcome to the Infinity College Basketball Tip-Off. And welcome to an absolutely fantastic place to watch a college basketball game. We've got the Bulldogs from Spokane and the Bulldogs from Indianapolis. And we are all fired up, each of us here for the first time doing our first game here at Hinkle Fieldhouse where so much basketball history has happened. What are you looking for tonight? Well, I'm really so excited to be here my first journey here in 34 years. I've never been to Hinkle and this place is rocking and rolling. Dan, this is Fenway Park, baby. But I'm looking forward to tonight to a physical performance by Butler against an offensive machine. Great balance when you look at Gonzaga. Both clubs in the last seven years are in the top ten in the nation in winning percentage. If Butler's going to win this game, they'll have to do it without arguably their best player. For more, here's Shannon Spade. Well, Dan, uh, Butler's Rodney Clark It's just one week removed from that scary accident in game that left him temporarily paralyzed for several minutes. In speaking with Clark yesterday, two emotions I picked up on immediately. Number one, he's extremely grateful. He's seen the game film. He knows that it could have been a lot worse than just the next spring. Number two, he's frustrated. His recovery and therapy, well, it's been a lot of nothing, just rest. In fact, he shot the ball for the very first time at practice yesterday. He told me he still has a little bit of pain by his shoulder blades. He will be reevaluated after this game, so his return is still to be determined. Shannon, thank you. You can hear the ovation that he's getting as he hands off the game ball. This has been the Infinity Tip-Off. Now let's take a look at how some coaches have fun with fundraising in the Infinity Coaches Charity Challenge. Shooting for 80 today, boys. Ooh, I feel a little 79 in my bones. Oh, yeah? Beat my 77. 76. Let me get your bag for you, Matt. Thanks. Oh, my pleasure. Just so you know, boys, I'm in this to win this. Must have forgotten my driver. Can I borrow yours? No. No. So that's how it's going to be today? Ooh, tough lie. Just need to sink this one to win, fellas. <clears throat> hey, you guys are supposed to be on the same team. What's your point? NCAA coaches, great at coaching, not so great at fundraising. Go to ESPN.com slash infinity and vote for your favorite coaches charity in the Infinity Coaches Charity Challenge. Presented by Direct TV. Tonight's game is a part of my home court week, our week-long celebration of the great college basketball arenas and venues around the country. And as Blue 2 will tell you, the mascot of the Butler Bulldogs, this is one of the great venues around the country. Let's go to our one-on-one. -on -one. Now, we got two great big guys in this game, Dick. Well, we got two big guys going to go head-to-head. -head. When we talk about Olenek, he has been on fire. Look at this big guy operating on the post. He can also shoot the basketball he's would have done but he's also a good perimeter player has really improved his post ability and has been on fire scoring on the other side really an improved player andrew smith he has come so far from this first year unbelievable progress he's a force on the interior very physical we should have an interesting matchup with the two goliaths going head to head Let's check out the starting lineups now, beginning with the visiting Gonzaga Bulldogs. Kevin Pangos, Gary Bell Jr. in the backcourt. Mike Hart, uh, an all-time hustler, a do-anything guy on the court. Elias Harris, so talented up front, along with Kelly Olynyk, playing about as well as anybody in the country right now. For Butler, without Rodney Clark, they will start Alex Barlow. Remember, Barlow hit the game-winning shot in overtime to beat Indiana. Kellen Dunham, a very talented freshman. Roosevelt Jones, Kyle Marshall, and then Andrew Smith, who Brad Stevens says has been sensational this year. It, you're, you'll be hard pressed to find two better guys as coaches who have had more success than Brad Stevens.
Evans, two trips to the national championship game, and Mark Few's taken to Gonzaga to the NCAA tournament each and every year that he's been the Zags head coach. And let's forget about the term mid-major. Nothing mid-major about these programs. Charter plays, million-dollar contracts, live like kings, and like I Andy Katz wrote about. There is nothing mid-major about the quality of play either. The Zags beat Butler up in Spokane last year. And the Zags get the first possession of the night. The ball in the hands of sophomore point guard Kevin Pangos. Tell you one thing, man. The Zags can flat out score. Olinico well, right inside had it rejected. Puts it back up and in. And that is the biggest difference in him since his redshirt year last year. Instead of being primarily a perimeter guy, he's taken that seven-foot body of his inside. Yeah, he's become much more effective on the post. Now you look right now at Butler without Clark. They really lose that threat from the perimeter. A terrific one of the best three-point shooters in America. Off balance shot, Roosevelt Jones kept alive, but Olenek steps out of bounds, and it'll be Butler ball again. There's Rodney Clark. Shannon told you about him in the pregame show. Suffered a scary-looking injury. Fortunately, just a sprained neck. Uh, was on the court for eight minutes before being taken off on a stretcher last week against him. They hope to get him back soon. Tempo, a big factor here for Butler. They're going to control Tempo. Make sure, as they told us before, get a good shot. That was not really a good shot right there. We've seen two tough shots from Butler. And one of the concerns for Brad Stevens, how big Gonzaga is on the inside and their size affected both of those shots. I think we're also a key factor tonight. They cannot afford Butler to have one of the bigs get the foul trouble. They do not have size to get the big in. When you look at Gonzaga, they can rotate like four giants on the interior. There's one of them, Olenek. Redshirt Jr., he turns it over, but... Gets it right back as Barlow couldn't throw out. Tell you one thing about Barlow, it's physical on the defensive end. They come right after you, and they make you earn your shots, baby. Elias Harris, the senior from Germany, doesn't get the bounce. Offensive rebound by Hart. That's what he does. All in it. Misses the three, and down to the rebound, the Bulldogs, and we've got bodies flying all over the place here in the early going. You know, Butler coming off a 62-47 win over Richmond. Did it without Clark, did a phenomenal job defensively. I can't believe the guy's 36 years old. I'm twice his age. I mean, what's happening? Twice the age of the You're twice his age and half as mature as he is. <laughs> On a good day. You're right about that, too. <laughs> Jones. Jones, a really unusual talent. Not a good shooter at all. He's got a good floater. Doesn't have a good jump shot. Built like a fullback. And he also leads the team in assists. He really attacks the basket. Very physical player. He's improved his free throw shooting. Barlow, the former walk on with a three. He hit the big shot that was hurt all over the state, as you said earlier, against the Hoosiers of Indiana. I can't say that. Doesn't really look to score. He's also a former walker. Now, a nice look inside for Elias Harris, and he is so tough down low. Well, you know, he's so versatile. He steps out to the perimeter. He can go inside. He's been around for an eternity. It seems like he's, he's been around for a lot of years. He is one of five players on the Gonzaga roster who is not from the United States. They have players from all over the place. Harris is from Germany. It's amazing how they find the most he's more few before the game about. Another down for you as time permits. Barlow the lob. And a foul underneath on the winner. And it's going to send Kyle Marshall to the line for two. A little set play, back screen. Trying to throw a lob over the top. Barlow, what an amazing story. There's the diagonal pass. There's the contact. Think about it. Final game in the NCAA championship two years in a row. An amazing tribute to Brad Stevens. And this close to winning it in 2010 against oh. Duke when Gordon Hayward missed the half court shot. We have been a movie? Oh, wow. Hoosiers, baby, we're right here. Game Day did a great job today with the Hoosiers story. Of course, this building is the spot not only where Hoosiers was filmed, but where the story that Hoosiers was based upon, the Milan Miracle of 1954, the, the Indiana High School State Championships, which at the time was just one class. Everybody plays everybody. That's the way that it was for many years when the state championships were held in this building. And you walk into this building, and it's like you're walking back in time. Unbelievable. See, their defense makes you slow up the pace of the game as well because they make it so difficult to get a shot. And that helps with their tempo. Sam Dower into the game for Olenek early as Pangos buries a deep three. 
He's a point guard who's got that unbelievable range as a shooter. He's a goosey of world comedy. Got a little something that uh, you mentioned every now and again. He's got a little swag, too. He's a very confident young man. <laughs> 33 points in his debut last year as a freshman, his first game, and he scored 33 points against Washington State. Andrew Smith trying to back down Dower, draws the double team. And a foul is the call. Thought it might be a travel going against Smith. I tell you, Smith was a real project as a type of dandy freshman, and he has now become such a major factor. You think of the Atlantic 10, what an unbelievable break they got. Getting Butler and also getting VCU. Now the question is, will they be able to keep Butler? Will they join possibly those seven Catholic schools? That would be unbelievable. All we know for sure about Real Island is we don't know much at all about exactly. where it's going and when it's going to end. Little zone. Yep. He told us he's going to zone. And they get a turnover out of it. Got a really interesting reason why he was going to utilize the zone. Didn't have a whole lot of time, he said, to prepare for all their sets. Yeah, Butler runs a ton of sets, and Gonzaga played at Portland Thursday night. They had some plane trouble getting here yesterday, so they just had a brief practice in Portland yesterday before a walkthrough today, so they figured a little zone would simplify things for them. Look at the passes and the movement of the ball that you have to get to get a shot down. Dower, the lefty, knocks down a long jumper, foot on the line. It's a two for Dower, whose minutes have been down because Olenek's been playing so well, but another very talented player that Markey wants to get in there whenever he can. See, the one great ingredient they have, they got five potential guys that can put 20 points on the board against you. Helen Dunham. And Brad Stevens said he would be a big key tonight, the freshman, if he shoots the ball well. They're a very dangerous team. Harris got a screen, gets inside, and lays it in. So one thing they're breaking down that defense. Benham is a vital guy. He was the leading scorer in the state of Indiana last year. Committed to that before his junior year. A great start on the road for the Zags, who are 17-1 and one on the season. They're only lost to Illinois. Butler is 15-2. and two. One of their two losses to Illinois as well. They also lost at Xavier. And Smith is fouled to take us to our first media timeout of the game. Some foul trouble for the Zags, but they've got an early seven-point lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by DirecTV. Don't just watch TV, DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV and in part by Infinity. Luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. And UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. Led to the move. at one. As we mentioned off the top, this is one of the most historic college basketball arenas of the nation. It's also hosted six presidents over the years. Jesse Owens ran here in 1935. The Milan Miracle, Bobby Fluff, that shot that led to the movie Hoosiers, happened here in 1954. And Oscar Robertson won a high school championship in this building in 1955. So much history, so many unique things in this building. Let's find Shannon Spake. Well, Dan, I am all the way top and this is a great view this court that these players are on right now this court has seen it all because it's the original court from 1928 now when this field house was built back in 1928 it was the largest college basketball venue in the country it's had some renovations however it's a historical landmark so what you see now is pretty much what it looked like when it was built in the 20s and guys did you know that they served snow cones cool <laughs> little touch no pun intended hey shannon i need to snow let's cone. get a couple down here get me a snow cone <laughs> shannon come on this building seats 11,000 and change, and there is not a spare inch of space in the building tonight. Michael Hart picked up the last foul for Gonzaga. He's gone to the bench with two and into the game for the Zags. 7-1 freshman from Poland, Shemek Karnowski, number 24, big man in the middle. They go zone again. Barlow misses badly, and here come the Zags. Tell you what, that zone would light up the eyes of Rodney Clark. I'll never forget Billy Donovan telling me he's as good as a shooter I have seen in my tenure at Florida. Congratulations to Billy on his 400 today. Routed in Missouri. They're going to be my team of the week with what they did. And 
against Texas A&M and also what they did right here against the uh, unbelievable Missouri team. Chris Davis had him first, and he said they were losses. Beat him by 31. Reaching foul on Cameron Woods, a sophomore from Louisville. Donovan's coming back into the game. Barlow will sit down for Butler. Both coaches will play up to nine or ten players, and both coaches... Uh, kind of had a feeling they couldn't anticipate what might happen in this game as much as they normally do, that they would have to go with the flow. Hey, one thing about Gonzaga that makes it special is the terrific balance. Dower again off the bench with another jumper. I tell you what, you bring a guy off the bench like that, you got a chance. I think they're definitely a potential Final Four team. I don't know, down, whatever happens here tonight. It's a 9-0 run right now for the Zags, who have made their last five shots. Deep one for Dunham, and Butler needed that. Badly, badly. That was a big trifecta by Dunham. She could have shot the lights out as a scholastic superstar in Indiana. Averages 10.5 points per game as a freshman. They have come up with some stops here. It's been difficult for them defensively, and they're a solid defensive team. Dower is feeling it and makes his third jumper. Neal with a great size. They're shooting right over the top of the defense. Came back out of the zone. Now he's rotating to man to man. And Jones operating as the point guard right now. Again, Clark's not only their best shooter, he's their primary point guard. Chase Stigall is into the game, number 33. He can handle the ball as well. He can shoot it, too. Stigall been getting some points from the perimeter. Baseline jumper is there for Woods. Cameron Woods getting about 15 minutes per game with a big jumper to make it a six-point game. Can Butler now get a stop? Which really square up well on that check shot. Karnowski off the side of the backboard, Butler ball. The defensive play on the interior against Karnowski from out of Poland. Jones spinning and just couldn't nudge it over the front of the rim, but he does draw the foul. ESPN's journey to the tourney is a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament Thursday night. It's a battle of the Pac-12, UCLA and Arizona. UCLA losing at home today to Oregon. Oregon's beaten both of these teams already this season. ESPN's journey to the tourney, 7 Eastern Thursday on ESPN2 and also live on Watch ESPN. That's not the way you want to go down and play Arizona after a loss at home. Oregon, Dana Holtman doing a terrific job. UCLA won 10, won 10 in a row. And we'll have the return match, Arizona at UCLA, as part of our Saturday primetime, our game day schedule. This is week one of eight with Reese, Digger, Jay, Jalen Rose. We're going to go to NC State next week. We're going to Indiana, Kentucky. UCLA, but, but will, will any place be louder than this place? This is unbelievable. We're at Fenway Park, man. Fenway, Ridley. Really lifts him up on a defensive end. 36 years old. It's amazing when you look at his resume, what he's achieved in such a short period of time. And how many so-called bigger programs would love to have him. You can say the same about Mark Few for many years as well. But these are two outstanding coaches, both very happy with the outstanding programs that they're coaching. You don't mess with happy as right. Jimmy V says. That's right. And that guy said, we are happy. Eric Fromm has checked in for Butler. Jones turns it over. Stolen away by Pangos. Oh, Jones was up in the air. It's a no-no yeah. right there. David Stockton, son of John, into the game for the Zags. And right now, Sam Dowell oh, is taking this thing over. The Dower Show. It's the Dower Show on national TV, baby. He's got his little show going on right now. I met Stockton's mother in the lobby of the hotel. Got a picture with her. He said, John, right now, can I be here? He's coaching. Dunham trying to draw the foul, did not. Jones with the offensive rebound, comes up short. John is coaching his daughter right now. His son can pass the ball, he lay a screen, he'll find it. So John Stockton actually coached Mark Few's son, AJ, for a, a couple of years. And Coach Few not home for AJ's birthday, turned 13 yesterday. He said, we'll celebrate tomorrow, AJ. He's going to celebrate tomorrow for you. And there's nothing to like the bring you better than a big W football <laughs> Show by Karnowski Jones. The handoff to Stigal. Oh, nice little set right there. And Dunham buries the corner three. Nice job to throw to the corner by Dunham. That was great. He does the offensive sets. Coaches do a marvelous job. The ball is in the Really a 
pleasure watching well-coached teams play as a team. Guy Landrietti short on the jumper. Butler ball. You really like that name, man. You've been calling that name all day, man. Guy <laughs> Landrietti. Stigal. Wow, look at that name. Yes. Are you serious? He shot that from downtown. Indiana, man, from Indianapolis. He shot that from Palomino's restaurant. Zags trying to quiet the crowd. Dower again. He won't. Timeout on the floor. A run by Butler. Rodney Clark, the first guy up off the bench, congratulating his teammates who are knocking down jumpers from all over Dickie V. Wow. That's a button island. This place is rocking and rolling. I can't even hear you, buddy. That shot by Bobby Plump that won a state title here in this building in 1954 is the shot that inspired the movie Hoosiers. Bobby Plump, Jimmy Chidwood, Mylon Hickory. Uh, this building, as Shannon mentioned earlier, was the largest uh, college basketball arena in the United States when it was built in 1928. Butler defeating the Irish in the first game back in 1928. It's a national historic landmark. Sixth oldest active building and the oldest floor. This is the original floor from 1928. Wow. Was that Digger's first that, game? No, it was the coach? second year. Oh, it was second the second year. year oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the guys in the Hickory yeah. uniforms, the Hickory yeah. jerseys on game day this morning? Uh -huh. Hey, Bobby Plump, yes, Plump's last shot, rush run. And Bobby Plump was a part of game day this morning, went out of the court and took a shot from the spot from where he hit the shot in 54, left it just a little bit short this morning. Dennis Topper, Gene Hackman. What a move he is. What a favorite. Oh, what a great move. From as Olenicus checked back in. Dowers going to the bench. A missed three by Andrew Smethers. Uh, a guy who just lights it up in practice and is right on the cusp. Brad Stevens feels to become a major contributor for Butler. Harris with a mismatch inside. Boy, is he a pull down low. Well, he really is, and he utilizes his size. He can post people. He can go out to the perimeter. I tell you, another great asset of Butler. You don't get many transition layups against him. You're going to have to execute your half-court game. And Butler considered one of the most physical teams in the nation on defense. They're, they're not the tallest team in the world, but they, they got a lot of strength, and they use it. Dunham whips a nice pass to Barlow. Barlow wide open, great screen down on the left side. And Harris called for the offensive foul. That's going to be his second. Mark Few does not like the call. Hart's got two. Harris has got two. So he goes to the bench. And Dower checks back in. Tim Kelly with the call. Have Tony, Tony Crisp on the game along with Bill McCarthy and Tim Kelly. There is some really quality basketball in the A-10. Really quality basketball. When you go up and down that conference, today St. Bonaventure beat Temple. Now we may have had a, a suspected or a possible elbow up high as we take a look. Watch oh, Harris. Right there. And there it is right there. And the officials can decide if they feel it was an elbow up above the shoulder. It's a it's a flagrant one. Two shots and the ball. That was more of a forearm than an elbow as the officials have a look at it and decide if it deserves any further penalty or if it's just a foul. Harris didn't think there should be any kind of a foul call at all. Now the officials discussing whether it should be a flagrant one. You know, both clubs really right now on a win streak, 12 in a row and 8 in a row. And no 
flagrant one. Just a personal foul on Elias Harris, but it is a big loss for the Zags with him sitting down with two. As you mentioned, though, they've got a ton of depth. They have depth. They're as deep as any team in America. They can really rotate people on the floor to make up for any foul trouble. So Harris on the bench with two. Butler ball down by three. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Shannon Spake of the game.